Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Broken Pact, the Mythic Odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please feel free to introduce yourselves, starting with Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I play Astarok, who's a man who now he's wandering around on boats with uh, with Therosians and and trying to adapt to that world. And so that's what he's doing now. He fights. He's a fighter. <laughs> Hello, I am Riley Silverman, and I play Safia, and Safia is a Nyx born with a little bit of Triton flair to her, and she is a worshiper of Thassa. She is a native of Theros, and uh, she's pretty pretty cool. I like her. I'm a big fan. And then, of course, she has a pet uh, crab by the name of Odie, who we actually have Odie in physical form now, so I'm excited about that. Uh, short for Odysseus, obviously, because that's the life that we live, So, nice. and uh, that's me. Um, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. Uh, uh, I forgot my character's name. I'm Lydia. Sorry, I was doing some last minute, like trying to figure out what I was going to say and then blanked on my own name. I'm Lydia, Lydia. Uh, a, a human, a human uh, swashbuckler rogue. Uh, Lydia is a real fond time. She doesn't have it all going up here, but at least she's sweet. Um, Lydia uh, <laughs> has a one-sided thing uh, with the god Thassa, but Thassa is no longer keeping her on red, as we have established. So, what's your luck? Perfect. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose and I play a Luxodon cleric uh, from the Selesnian Conclave over in Ravnica, uh, who was uh, pretty good friends with uh, Astarok. And she's also found herself over here on uh, Theros for reasons to be determined still, I guess. We haven't really talked about it. And uh, yeah, she's a happy-go-lucky, larger than life, appreciating all the things that live and be just trying to uh, do good in the world and help her friends. So that is, oh yeah, and I forgot her name. I was just gonna be like, yeah, let's play. <laughs> <laughs> just leaving you all hanging. And uh, her name is Tuturu. Tuturu! <laughs> That's a thing we do. We yeah. do Thank you all so much for joining us here. We are playing uh, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the player characters are level eight at this moment and we are using the Mythic Odysseys of Theros campaign setting from Dungeons & Dragons, which uses a world uh, originally created for Magic the Gathering based on Greco-Roman myths and legends and all that kind of good stuff. And we'll get into that after we uh, thank our sponsors, starting, of course, with Hero Forge. Hey, y'all. All of the character art for this season was created using the Hero Forge character creator. And now you can actually customize your own minis that you can create your own little poses. You can give them cool little action things. You can paint them and you can make them make out if you want to, which is weird because these are both technically me. But, you know, we would all do it if we could. So that's a thing that you can do. And uh, if you use the command Hero Forge in chat or you go to HeroForge.com, uh, you can start your journey down the Hero Forge rabbit hole today. So check that out. Also, I was very excited because last week on National Wheelchair Day, Hero Forge announced that you now have the option of creative customized wheelchairs for your Hero Forge minis. Uh, so you can get a little bit more accessibility with your D&D characters, which is really awesome and something that I very much support. So uh, good on you, Hero Forge. And so that's why they support us, and we want to support them for that awesome, awesomeness as well. So check that out. Absolutely. And another of our sponsors is Die Hard Dice. Yes. Do you like dice but hate how easy it is to kill them? Well, then you might like these dice. Die Hard <laughs> Dice. It's harder to make them die. Um, check out a wide assortment of math rock click clacks over at Die Hard Dice. They've got dice sets to suit every whim and all reasonably priced. Enter code exclamation mark DH Dice in chat or go straight to dieharddice.com. Enter code natural20 to save 10% off your first order. Die Hard Dice. Perfect. Um, and we want to welcome any listeners of the podcast and watchers of VOD on YouTube and remind you to please like, comment, subscribe, leave a rating, all of that stuff that tells people we exist. Uh, it really helps us out and we love hearing from you all. So, uh, so thank you so much. Um, and I think 
that that is going to lead us into our intro. So let us dive back into the Broken Pact, Theros. Episode four, The Prophet of Crucifix. We open, we do, on a crab, sitting on a deck of a keelboat named the Moray as the sun rises over the horizon. And when I say the horizon, I do mean the horizon. For what is the, so, sorry, for that is where our party finds themselves, at the edge of the world. The glassy blue ocean pours itself endlessly over the side of existence. The sky is both daytime and twilight. The god plain of Nyx glitters beyond the waterfall behind the morning clouds, the bright yellows and oranges giving way to a background of milky violet with tinges of deep blue in an otherworldly mix of light and shadow, which gets darker and deeper below the tumbling cascade as the waters fall into the underworld. Astarok, Tuturu, Lydia, and Sophia emerged victorious over Captain Phineas and his crew, as the forces of the Dream Trawler proved no match for the foursome in close combat. Captain Finn slain and the hags aboard, disguised as ship's mages, defeated the party left the Dream Trawler in the hands of First Mate Twinkletoes and went back to their ship, the Moray. While resting and considering their next moves, a special visitor came by, Thassa, the god of the sea herself. In her presence, the party had differing reactions from reverence to deference to, in one case, fainting, and in Odie, the crab's case, maybe getting a little bit taller. They had a nice chat, retelling the epic tale of Calife, favored of the sea, and discussed what the future might hold. And that future, they decided, was to follow the mysterious collective vision granted to them by Metami the Sphinx, to find the temple at the edge of the world for answers and guidance. And that is where we pick up our tale. It is a lovely, clear, crisp morning on the edge of the ocean, of the Siren Sea. You see uh, glassy water that sort of pours over the edge as far as you can see in every direction. A woman is uh, near the edge of the docks. She has beautiful skin. She has pupilless and irisless eyes. She has two regular arms that are folded in front of her and two ghostly arms that sort of play in the breeze and feel the plants and the energy around her. And she says, welcome and welcome back. Oh, hi, Krufix. It's been a while. How are you? I am doing very well. And how are you two, True? I'm good. Um... Didn't expect to see you here. Astarok, we're back here. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Turns out we have been here before. Uh, Wait. I didn't realize you... when we said we were going to the edge of the world, it'd be here. We didn't really know much about the whole layout, you know, when we when we were here before, so. <laughs> you, 
you two know Crufix? Quick clarification. I am Kaideli. I am a prophet of Crufix. I am not the god themselves. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, sorry, you know, it could be confusing because it's like K names and, and we associated you. you. You get it. No offense, man. Yeah. There are a lot of K names in Theros. Is it we saw, or did we did we meet you then, Kaidel? Yes. Okay. We met when you were last here with other friends of yours, but these are new. What are your names? Uh, Lydia puts out a hand for a handshake. Hi, I'm Lydia. Nice to meet you. And then just starts touching all of the hands as much as she can. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, and she gives you like a soft handshake with her human hands and her sort of ghostly other hands play along and are having fun high-fiving and doing high-five. <laughs> Um, I'm Sophia. Um, my little friend running around here is Odysseus. We call him Odie for fun. I don't know where he got off. He's up to some mischief. Um, hi. It's very nice to meet you. Well, if you are here, you must have questions or things that you wish to talk about. Why are we here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might be a bit bigger of a question than you expected. <laughs> My is that you were sent here on some sort of quest or errand for a god or a demigod. I am here to help you sort out why you were sent here. Maybe together we can figure out why. I mean, sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, we all we've got is this c confusing thing from Metamai person, Sphinx thing. And to be fair, like, I've had my fair dealing with Sphinxes. I mean, even, even back home, like, Sphinxes are just, they're a lot. Let's just leave it at that. And uh, we, uh, we've, we've, we ain't got much to go on. I, I don't want to be mean, but can I say they might be a little needlessly cryptic? I tend to agree. Fortunately, as the prophet of the god of horizons and mysteries, I can help parse what they are trying to say. Please, join me. And she motions towards the stairs, um, which lead up to a temple behind you. Um, I designed this cute little map. Um on a website called Dungeon Scrawl. Um, so if you want to have an idea of what the temple at the edge of the world looks like. Ooh, um, your keelboat, the Moray, is about 60 feet in length and docked at the wharf sort of sitting there. Um, there is a 10 foot high or 10 foot wide path that leads, sort of meanders up a bit of a hill that makes up the temple at World's Edge. It's covered in bushes and olive trees and ground cover. The largest central building appears to be flanked by two large trees, one of which you emerged through, Astarok and Tuturu, last time you were here. There's another outbuilding a little bit taller than that large central uh, central one. It looks like it may have an observatory on top. Um, and there is no animal life uh, to be seen here, but lots of plant life. She leads you to the temple proper, um, where there are benches and seats, and um, she offers you food if you're interested in breakfast. As Always. it is the morning, which, by the way, this is the end of a long rest. So if you haven't recharged Yay. all of your things, go ahead and do that. Clear oh, yeah. your spells for the day. Um, you can get back half of your hit dice, etc. 
and she had she has you all sit down. Great. So, um, a couple a couple of things. One thing I want to say real quick is first of all, Noctum Sky, thank you for the raid. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. And then also in character, I want to say that if we're this close to like the barrier of the other worlds, like Nyx and the underworld, I think that me being Nyx born is probably showing a little bit. So I think that like while we're here, at least I think in like my hair and maybe like in my like robe that I'm wearing, like it starts to look a lot less like the seaweed fabric we talked about last week and more like this like silky otherworldly style. And it has like you can see little bits of stars in it. And I think maybe even that was showing up a little bit when Vasa was there, but it's not nearly to the degree that it is now. I think when Vasa was around, you were just seeing a little bit showing up like her her hair and maybe a little bit of her clothing. But now it's like it's she probably can't hide that she's next born right now because she's so close hmm. to next. Um, Dantilus is wide eyed and just agape and can't even form words as he follows oh, you and the Cadre right. uh, up and says, um, am I, am I allowed to, may, may I, may, may I come? Hey, hey, you're going to have to start learning to think for yourself because we, we can't just keep having you check in every time we leave the room to see if you can come with us or not. Just, if you want to come, come. If not, do what you got to do, man. Yeah, kid, just follow us around and write stuff down. Yeah, as a storyteller... You should be more assertive. Yeah, uh, Kaidel, this is uh, this is Danny. He's with us. He follows us around. I think he's gonna write like a saga or something. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna be in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and are you bringing? Oh, thank you for the raid, Norse Foundry. Hey, oh, thank you. Hi, um, and Odie's coming as well. Yeah, yeah, of course he is. So. Kaideli says, tell me, what brings you to the temple at the edge of the world? Well, you said like, well, like we said, we had that whole meta my cryptic sphinx problem thing. And we just we just want to know what, what it meant, because I feel like it's important and I feel like we just we just don't know where to start with it. Mm. And meta my gave you a vision, but didn't loop in the other gods. That's interesting. Sent you directly to me. Yeah, well, I'd say he kind of indirectly sent us to you. <laughs> well, it yeah. took a little bit of like figuring out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, honestly, most of it was just me really liking the favorite, one of my favorite toys on my boat and I decided to try it out and it turns out it worked. So, you know, sometimes things are fun. Well, but yeah, I don't think he looped any of the other gods in. Yeah, Can we they do that? Typically, when visions are given, they are given in a divine nature, not avoiding the knowledge of the gods. Which leads me to believe that I know why you're here. Cool. Tudoru looks very expectantly at Kaidel, like she's listening intently. Mm -hmm. Theros is dying. It's collapsing in on itself. People who have a connection to this world deeper than simple piety can see it. People who have a connection to the multiverse greater than the ability to merely walk the plains and feel it. It is a branch that has been cut off from a tree for far too long. It needs heroes to mend what is broken. It needs you. So we have to save the world? Nerve speaking. Yes. I mean, that feels like a lot of pressure. I mean, we we did some pretty good work helping a city a little bit, but a, a, a whole plane. 
I don't know. We we're, we're just four people. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm just a I'm just a sea captain. All I know is going from place to place and getting raided by zombie Orpheus. So Yep, thank you, you Zombie Orpheus, for the yeah. raid. <laughs> that happens in my life. Before their stories were written for all time, Daxos of Melitus was just a soldier. Kithion of Akros was just a young man. Caliphae was just someone who loved the sea. I know she, was, that one. she was the best at loving the sea. She was so yeah. good at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know her. Then yeah. they became heroes. Then they became legends. Of course, there are many other names that you probably haven't heard of that didn't reach their destinies. Or perhaps their destinies were to become warnings and lessons. But I think that I know that this is a path for you. Let me further explain and indulge me a little bit of history lesson. I promise it won't take too long. Before the gods, there was chaos. There was no order. Faith made the 15 gods, but fear manifested the titans. Proxa, Plage, Uro, and Skotha, the titans of killing, consuming, multiplying, and conquering. When the titans were defeated, they locked them away. But the gods live in fear that one day the fifth titan will return to Theros and unleash havoc. Who's the fifth titan? The name is unknown, even to me. We believe they were the titan power. Power sounds like a lot of power. And we're the only ones who can do this? You are in a unique position to be able to do this for a couple of reasons. Two of you, and she looks to Astarok and Tuturu, have a connection to the greater Molars that is unique on, of people on Theros. There are many across other worlds who could access this power, but most don't know they have it. Tutu's going to lean in and be like, she's talking about the tattoos. That's, that's what she, that, I, I think she's talking about the, ta the tattoos. Mine's, mine's gone. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> who oh. knows? Maybe we can, like, get you some... Uh, we've got some stuff to confess about, like, where we're from and stuff after this, so, uh, but... We'll circle but, back. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good to share. For, I believe, Lydia and Safia, you both also have the capability of knowing what they have. It's actually Sophia. Sorry, just one Sophia. Sophia. So I have the ability of knowing what they have. I don't understand. What do you mean by that? The magic of what's called the world tree that binds us together as a multiverse is a unique and ancient magic. You, as one of the descendants of the Caliphate are <gasps> central what? to the indelibility of Theros. Lydia, as one of the descendants 
of another of Theros' gods. You too have a unique capability that allows you to connect with the platonic ideal of the plane. Together, the four of you have the capability to do what is required to prevent this world from collapsing in on itself. Well, I don't want that to happen. All my stuff's here. <laughs> she nods. I, uh, sat, 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 uh, we're gonna need to have a talk maybe later. We don't have to do it around all of these people. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, we, we'll talk about that later. Your The glow is pretty though. I the get glow? it now. Yeah. yeah. It's Look at you shining. I, I actually didn't know that detail. Oh. I mean, oh. I, I, that's, that's news to me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've heard stories. I mean, there's like family rumors, but no one ever said it like directly from Calif. Oh, okay, I'm learning things. If you have questions about any of this, I am more than happy to try to help process. But let me complete what I think that you're here to do. The fifth Titan looms large over the egos and minds of the gods of Theros. And when they came into being, they locked the Titans away. By which I mean, the four that were on Theros were imprisoned, and the fifth locked off of the plane. In doing so, travel between other planes and Theros became essentially impossible by conventional means. Only very specific types of planar travel worked, one of which is through the world tree. That is choking off energy, oh. vital for the continued survival of this world. Those who live in the polis, those who live in the middle of Theros, they may not see it. The gods certainly don't in their ivory towers and palaces. But on the edge of the world, it can be plainly seen. And she motions towards one of the trees. And you can see that a portion of one of the roots has begun to crumble into dust. The, their tree is doing that? The, are you asking the DM? Uh, I guess I'm confused because you said travel through the the world tree is choking off Thera. Is that what is that what she said? I, I, I'm I'm confused at what the order of events that was being described. Right. Uh, the world tree is easier to think of as a symbolic tree, mm. which can be traveled with or through in some cases, often connecting to real physical trees such as these. The lack of energy being exchanged between the world tree and Theros is causing Theros to collapse in on itself and die. And it can't be seen everywhere yet. In order for Theros to continue to survive, the roads must be opened. In order for the roads to be opened, the gods must be convinced that the roads must be opened. All of the gods, which is why they weren't contacted. Metamai contacted you to come here. Your quest would be to convince the gods of this to beseech them and to argue the case in favor of reopening the world. Many of the gods will not want to do this. They are fickle, they are paranoid, and they are ego-driven. Some may be 
empathetic. Some have not made up their mind. All will require ordeals of one kind or another. And once those have been done, the world will have been saved. Hey, uh, look, I, I, I know you've, you've got this whole fate thing going on and seeing the future and doing Oracle stuff or whatever, but I, I don't know. It, it feels like, I, I mean, Tuzuru, you can speak for yourself, but if we're t trying to talk to gods into something, I, I think they might have gotten the, the wrong members of our group. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, our firm, Velma and Lucian, they're, they're the ones who talk and, and think good about stuff. Tudor is pretty good, but I, I just hit things. I think maybe they, they, they got the wrong person for the quest this time. I don't know about that, Astarok. I mean, I don't necessarily think it has to be about how good you are at talking. I mean, I think it's who you are and uh, what how you see things and the experiences you have. And those kind of things are important as well. So don't discount yourself just because you're not, you're not, you don't articulate yourself as eloquent as Lucian can. You know yeah, how much his mom paid for school. I don't, I don't know if I've ever articulated any eloquence at all. Well, that's not true. I, I heard you on the, the pirate ship yesterday. You, you talked enemy pirates into joining your sword with theirs and fighting against a common foe. That's, I, I, don't, I don't know this Lucian and this Velma. She sounds lame. But I, I think that you, you have that cool letter. And, you know, you were super friendly to us. And we were, we were supposed to fight each other to the death. We thought. We didn't know. We, we were confused. But you, you, you made us like you. And, like, there was, a, there was a moment where I was like, I hope I don't have to kill this guy. He seems really cool. So oh, don't sell yourself short. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, if, if that's articulating an elephant, then uh, <laughs> sure. Maybe I'm better at it than I thought. I do have to say, though, Kaidel, I don't know how you feel, everyone, but I, 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 I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Uh, I'm sorry. The Sphinx's name was um, Metal, 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 Metal Guy. Metal Guy. Metal Guy. Yeah. It was real Metal, Metal Guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure why he didn't just counsel all the gods. That's usually seems like a good way of approaching things is, you know, being transparent and talking to everyone. And I don't know why that wasn't maybe the first step in all this and why they're asking us to do it for them. It's kind of feels, feels like we're getting passed off, like passed on to do the work. They seem like reasonable guys, right? The gods? Well, we just met Thassa, and Thassa is <laughs> so cool. So cool. Um, like, okay, sorry. Nope, you're good. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, I, I don't speak for everybody else, but like, I've pretty much been waiting my whole life to do a series of, of adventurous ordeals. So like, I am in. Um, so that's what's happening for me, but I don't want to force anybody else into it. So, I mean, like, even like Lydia, who's my first mate, like she can make her own decisions because she's on my boat. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm like in charge. I mean, I'm in charge of her and that like I'm the captain and like, please, please toe the line and stuff like that. But uh, as far as like, hey, please go on this God defying quest with me. That's like your own thing to do. Um, but like, yeah, like I want this kid to write a cool poem about me and I I am into it. I want my kids to tell their kids to tell the stories of me the same way I've been telling Caliphate stories my whole life. So I'm in. So like, you don't have to convince me anymore, but you may want to work harder on the rest of them because I don't think they have signed on yet. Wait, you know what? If if the captain's in, yeah, you okay. got me behind you. I just that was easier than I was going to be. Do I'm not going to lie. Hey. That was way easier than I was going to be. <laughs> Saving the world, I am all for it, and I'm here for it. I'm just curious what up, what's up with Metamai 
And I'm a little concerned about going to all these gods and how we're going to get in contact with them. That's all I'm saying. I, I know you appreciate it. That's that. really fun to me. It sounds I, like so much fun, guys! I appreciate all of those concerns. And let me first start by saying Metamai is lazy. The gods right. are selfish. These larger-than-life characters are more mortal than they would like to let everyone else believe that they are. Don't meet your heroes. Yeah. Metamai is a sphinx. He is inscrutable. He is aloof and interested in his own survival. And so, oftentimes, sphinxes and other God, near godly beings will pass off trials it's, and labors. It's fine. Let's just save the world. I, I will <laughs> say, you y'all aren't from here. We learned that pretty clearly from from Vasa yesterday. That like y'all are from like another pl like another planet or another world. It seems like. Oh yeah, we did tell you about that. Yeah, right. I mean like well, I mean you didn't as much as my God told me. Well, he she talked to you and I was there for it. Um. Sure. That is kind of how things work around here, where yeah. like the gods want something done and then they don't really do it. And then they like pick some like really cool mortals to like do it for them. And then people write stories about it. And that that is kind of the MO of, yeah. of Theros. So like, I get that that's like probably not how things are done where you're from. I'm sure everybody is like straightforward and like nobody is like up on high, manipulating people on low to do their bidding for them. But that is like day and date how things work here. And actually, hey, it's pretty no. much the same. Yeah. When I think about it that way. And you know what? I mean, we got a lot of different people where you come from and. Uh, you just kind of got to go with the flow. Like if you're at a Simic party, you never ask what's in the food. They're a whole group. But the the general idea is that you got to do what the locals do. And if going on quests and talking to gods and trying to stop Titans from collapsing the plane is what the locals do, hey, let's have a party. I'm just going to nod and pretend that I understood what a lot of those words meant. He said party. Is yeah, that, party that one I got. Civic yeah, was a little after. bit like, like, is that like a Seder group that you, I don't know. Like, I will no, say, just... I will say, if you were at a Seder party, you should be careful what you eat. I'm just going to put that out oh. there as a thing to know. Um, it's It could end bad. It has ended bad. Um, there are certain ports where Lydia is not welcome right now, but uh, otherwise we're Good fine. to know. Okay. Always bringing up old stuff. It was like last week. Well, Seder parties. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult his mom, but you know, the food was the food. It just, you didn't have to stare at it. Anyway, um, we can probably, and we can move. So yeah, so quest, I'm in. I think, I think I've convinced them. Shockingly easier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not gonna lie, but that's great. So easier what are we doing now? Easier than I thought it was going to be as well, but I'm so glad. Where yeah, how do we get to the gods? What's next? We've, we've talked to Thassa. I'm sure uh, Thassa's my homegirl. She's, she's Lydia's homegirl. I'm sure she's going to be cool with it. Um, but then, like, who you know is going to be real tough is Mogis. That guy seems like he's not going to be a big fan of anything that we ask. We throw his way. So I'm sort of friends with his brother for a, a, a little challenge I did a little while back. Maybe yeah. we can use that connection, right? Oh, oh no, no, that's actually going to be the worst. I would that a hundred percent not bring that up to him when it comes up. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How many gods are there? There are fifteen gods. That's a lot of gods. And as for finding them, I have something to aid you. Please follow me. And she stands up and leads you down to a corner. Uh, of the uh, of the island, where there's a tide pool, and in the tide pool, uh, there appear to be uh, many starfish, fifteen to be exact. And she pulls out a leather satchel 
He gathers them up and says, this will help you find where you need to go. And hands you a bag of starfish, I guess. Nice. Um, <laughs> a little confusing. But she hands over this satchel. And she says, I'll show you. And she leads you to a very fine stone uh, mosaic map of Theros on the floor. And she motions to you to dump out the bag. Okay. So I dump out the bag. If I had to die every day, if someone gave me a weird starfish puzzle, I'd have a million a million. To, uh, as the starfish tumble out of this bag, they move and crawl to specific places on the map. And as they do so, some of them begin to give off bioluminescent light. Has Tutu ever seen a starfish? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Would you have? I don't know, because Ravnica doesn't really have water. Yeah. I mean... It is some water, just not Maybe. Like... I mean, it, probably not, unless you've been to an aquarium in the Simic Combine, or... No. Or you saw them at, the, uh, at that one dinner party, but probably not. Oh, wait, like we were eating them? Well, I don't know about that. But. <laughs> well, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, as soon as they say, I was crawling definitely... on the wall outside <laughs> okay. of yeah. Would you have seen one last time you were here at this location? Maybe. Because we did go on that little boat ride, but that was also more in the sky and through Nixon stuff. But Yeah. I mean, I didn't, but that character, the, uh, someone who will not be named, was there. <laughs> Starfish crawl over the portions of the map, and some of them light up. About half of them light up, and others find a spot, stop, and don't light up. And Kaideli says, any map can be read by the sigiled starfish. Those starfish that are alit signify that that god is on the current plane, which is the one that we're on right now, the material plane. The map, of course, would read differently if you are in Nyx or in the Underworld. The unlit stars show where those gods are at corresponding points in those other three, in those, those other two locations. <sighs> this will help you find the gods at their homes, at their palaces, at their places of worship, to request ordeals, to convince them of your labor. Do you have a map aboard your ship? Yeah, Large. I've got lots of maps, yeah. This will work with any map of Theros. How do we just come and go from Nyx in the underworld, like casually? There are a couple of ways. There are bridge points, such as this temple, where if you sail over the edge, you can reach the underworld, or you could reach Nyx. There are other bridge points where either the four of you or your entire ship can travel. Most of the underworld can be sailed. All of Nyx can be sailed. Those locations vary, and they tend to be holy places. They might be different depending on which temples you go to. For example, Skophos, does not have access to Nyx, but it has access to the Underworld. There are places that can take you from Nyx to the Underworld, but not to the Material Plane. Those are typically how people can traverse, and often how the returned come, and how the um, 
the naiads come from Nyx and things like that. The other way, of course, is how you got here with your magic. That's, that's, that's kind of why I asked the question, because the thing on my boat was great that we can do that, but it also doesn't work every day and takes a long time to recharge. So mm -hmm. is there like a quick, I guess that's what I'm asking was like a quick answer of like, here's where we can go to do this thing so we can, we can get about our business and do stuff instead of chatting it out too long every time. There are only three planes. And so you can probably hit up multiple gods in a row, or you can wait until the magic has recharged. Do we okay. want to start? Where do you all want to go? Yeah. yeah. You guys, do you have a all preference? Right. Any of y'all? Do you want to go to the underworld first? Do you want to go to Nyx first? So. What do you think is a good plan of attack? You two are the, you, you two are probably know this plane better than anyone else. Where do so the most me, starfish look like they're located? Let me try and share an image with you, and then uh, you can work off of that as well, um, as the starfish are on the mosaic. Ooh. There are a couple of stars in the oceans here on the material plane. I, uh, I kind of want to sail over the edge of the world, boss. I know, I kind of want you to, because the thing is, like, yes, they're right. Like, we know the oceans of Theros, like, better than probably anybody, but, like, I've never been to Nyx or the Underworld. I kind of want to see that. Yeah, but uh, how does that sailing, like, work? When you go over the edge, is it, like, just sailing normal, but you, like, go down, or, or do you fall for a long way? Because I don't love falling for a really long way. <laughs> but, probably depends I mean, on which one we do. We can do what we got to do, but... Yeah. What does that feel like? We haven't actually done it because it's like no. not a thing people just like do on a regular oh. basis. Mm -hmm. um, All right. um, what's it like going to heaven in your world? Never tried Fair it. Fair point. Fair okay, cool. point. Yes. And like, what's it like going to hell? I bet you don't know that either. So. No, sure but don't. That we do know. That we oh, know. Yeah, we do well. know, actually. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's I not great. It's not that. It's not yeah. great. Yeah, it was okay. Do not recommend. I mean, our underworld actually is, we actually have, our underworld is like, there's bad parts and there's good parts. There's like slums and there's like good areas. So, so. same sort of thing. Lots of cars. Yeah, yeah Nick's, uh, no, I don't know what a car is, but um, I don't think there's any of those down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe there are and you just haven't been there, right? That's true. I bet. Um, but I would say I no one who's cars. written about it has ever mentioned a car. Um, and then like Nick's is like the realm where our gods live. It's like, it's like the, like the spiritual, the astral oh. realm. It's like celestials and it seems, it sounds like really awesome. Like, That's so cool. Like I yeah, want to go there like right now, but I also feel like maybe like we should do that later because that might be the harder one. I don't know. Where we're from, a place called Ravnica, when you die, uh, you just kind of stick around for a little while. Yeah. You know, like we, we still chat with people who are dead. Like it's a big part of how we do investigations. <laughs> Oh, well, actually, I don't know if you remember the guy on the boat yesterday with the gold mask over his face and the guy oh, yeah. in jail that was like that. That's that's somebody who died and came back from the dead. But they don't, no. they don't tend to be very chatty. They tend to kind of be a little bit lost. And oh. they're, they're a little bit creepy. I'm not going to lie. I don't like them. Um, kind of a bummer. And like, yeah. Yeah. And they make they I as someone who like is like a godly woman, I feel a little bit like I have to kind of propel them a little bit. Like it's a real mm. weird thing. But yeah. um, well. Well, I mean, we can catch up and kind of talk about where we're from to maybe give you some more information if you want. I don't know how you want to do this. We can um, go back to the boat and figure this out. I don't. What What do you think? Well, I wanted to look at this map that we were just mentioned to look at, so I can see where people are because that would help. Like if like if like a few of the gods were in one location, we could like fast travel there and talk to them and like solve that set of quests and then go to another location and do that there. Like that mm. seems like a good, like efficient way to do it. Yeah, mm. I like that. Okay, let me get the map up. I apologize for the for that, but there is a map of current locations. 
as far as you're aware, of where you can find the various gods, and the starfish are lit up corresponding to them. Um, Kaideli also mentions you can take your time. Time passes here in an interesting way, where if you wish to stay and study or cast your spells for preparation, you may do so. Good to know. Where is the map so that I can see it? Yeah, I just want to know what the options are so we can know where to go. I'm going to turn the roll 20. Okay. Right there. Hooray! Now, this is my, um, my not great version, but... Uh, next week I'll have a very pretty version, and everyone I'll email it to everybody so that so you can. So Awesome. I, I saw the one I'd pass and and read black eyed peas for just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? No way. So just to add a character question. This is just to kind of cut through the lore dumps a little bit. Um, are the purple ones the ones in Nyx, and the orange ones are the ones in the underworld, or vice versa? So the. The orange ones are the ones that are on your current plane of existence, which is okay. the material plane. The purple ones are ones that are not on the current plane of existence, either the underworld or Nyx. Okay. okay. And so how do we like binary yeah. state? And how do we figure which ones are which for the underworld or Nyx? Uh, if you are on that plane, the starfish will show you. Oh, so we'd have to travel there first to know which one is which. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. You can take educated guesses, um, but in order to know for a fact, you'd have to go there. Cool. Uh, cool. Addition- and, and where are we? Like, I guess we're on this. We're in this special yes. like temple place. Where are we in rel- relation to this stuff? As far Kaideli as- will say, if you wish to stay on the material plane or travel to any of those other two planes, I can make it so that or the magic of the of the plane can make it so that you appear on the edge of the map. Makes sense. Edge so of the have, world. You can edge of the map. And that's where you'll start. Okay. Well, hey, so, I mean, it seems like you two really wanted to try going over the edge. Why don't we go down that? It seems like at least a couple of them are probably wherever that goes and just feel it out from there. Yeah, why don't we go to the one that's kind of like it's like, if we're on the edge of the world, then there's a couple that look like they're pretty close to the edge of the world. So if we can travel into their into their realm, then we could probably get to them. So I don't know, like the one that's like, that looks like it's up towards the north might be useful. There's also one down to the south and the islands. So I feel like it makes more sense to kind of start where we are and work our way inward. But that's just, that's just me thinking. Mm-hmm. I agree. Hey, you know this world better than I do. Yeah, Kaidele. but again, I've not have I've not I have not sailed in Nyx before. So like once we do that, like that's a very different scenario. Kaideli will look at the two starfish that you've pointed at and say, ah, the Northern Isles, that is most likely going to be the realm of Karanos, the god of storms. He yeah, spends I'm... most of his time in Nyx. I would find it unlikely for him to be in the underworld. Likewise. To the south and east, the other one that you had pointed out, that is overlaid with the realm of Tizerus, where Erebos has his palace. Again, I would find it unlikely for him to be a Nyx. Okay, so we can't wait to those at the same time. Question, this one over here by near the Cities of the Dead, is that going to be Erebos or is that going to be Phoenix? Because I know that like the Returned and Phoenix tend to be pretty close friends. Erebos tends to remain in Tizerus. Um, the gods Athreos, Farika, perhaps even Phoenix would spend more time in the Cities of the Dead. Hey, what about Aroas? I, I kind of got into him when I was, you know, here a, a little earlier. I mean, when you find out a place is like, got a minotaur as a god, that's pretty cool. Aroas, the god of victory, has the temple of victory in Akros. 
and points to the starfish that is glowing. Yeah, tracks, that's tracks. Uh, and so that would mean that Iroas would be on your plane of existence. I would be unsurprised to find Iroas there. Iroas is uh, twins <clears throat> with Mogis, the god of slaughter, the twin gods of war, victory, and slaughter. And Mogis typically spends his time in Skophos and points to another uh, spot on the map, which is also, right, I believe also, oh, oh. looks like uh, Mogis is not on the current plane of existence. But uh, Mogis is the Minotaur god. Uh, Iroas is many shapes, many forms, and all the gods can take any form they so choose. Typically, oh. Iroas takes the form of a champion of of a centaur, of a minotaur, of any any great champion. Oh. Well. Minotaur form's cooler. <laughs> All right. Yeah, minotaurs are awesome. Minotaurs um, are awesome. Well, this is a little scary. Not gonna not lie. Not gonna fight you other, on all that. Uh, other minotaurs are really cool. Yeah. Now, um, as the gods move, so too will they move about the map. Their locations may change. However, their temples are fairly constant, and you should be able to find them there. Well, hey, you guys know this plane a little better than we do. You know the gods? I say pick one and let's go. What are you thinking, boss? You know, my gut's telling me the God of Storms. I think we should go to Northern Isles, and we should sail into Nyx, go off the map, go to Northern Isles, say hello to the God of Storms. I'm like, hey, what's up, God of Storms? Uh, I'm not your follower, but I definitely partake in your powers a lot, and I'm a big fan of what you do. So oh. let's do it. Yeah. Oh, you do so good there. Let's go. Yeah. All right. I'm for it. Sounds like a plan to me. Excellent. Well, heroes... I'm glad that you have taken up this mantle. Is there anything else that I can help you with that you have questions of before you take off? I think, I think we're, we're good. good. Yeah, we we're going to go off and do an adventure. Yeah. And you're always welcome back, should you wish to return. All right. Cool. All right. And she will lead you back down to the dock, help yep. you unmoor the boat. And um, you can sail off of the edge of the world if you so choose. Oh, we so choose. Yeah, I think <laughs> we definitely like. I think it's probably like. I'm, I'm, I bet Astrolock and Tutori might even have trouble like containing Lydia and Sophia's like excitement to like like prepping everything, making sure Odie's on the board. Is that kid here, Dantelis? Is Dantelis here? Yeah, yeah. Eddie, get on the ship. I'm. Listen, I'm not huge on plane travel. Um, could I not go? You have 30 you know seconds you, to decide. Yeah, you do you. If you don't want to go, you don't want to go. I'm we're not. not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure oh, out. Right, I'm gonna, and then we hop on the boat and start pushing off from the dock. Great. And, uh. Yeah, and Dantilus will figure out his own way home. He's not he's not wanting to do some plane jumping. So, so much for wanting to write our story. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We'll just have to course. remember it. Wait, sorry. Um, as you are pushing off, you can sail over the edge. Make All right, a... Lydia. All right, Sophia. Are you are I'm you ready so for excited. this? I know you're this all is... excited. <laughs> <gasps> ah. <laughs> Let's do this. Are you gonna like? Are you gonna like draw something to remember this by, or what? Are, what? Uh, what is everyone gonna do? I'm gonna hide downstairs for this. Um, but however, I can help you all to prepare for this moment. So it is the best moment ever. Ever. Let me know. Um, here's a question. Do you remember yesterday when I like used some magic to give you a little bit of chill before Please we do went that. on? Okay, I need cool. that. Uh, yes. Astrolock, you in? Do you want some of that? Nope. You know what? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Let's right. just do this thing. Excuse me. So I'm going to cast Calm Emotions on Tutsuru, and I'm assuming I can resist it. 
Uh, um, no. <laughs> yeah, I will say out of character, I made the mistake. I cast Call Emotions in the second game, and I did not give Tutsuru the chance to resist it, but she's okay with it. We talked about it afterwards, and it's fine, but I feel bad about it. So remember that your spells have saving throws. Um, all right, so yeah, I give you a minute of, of just chill. I give you a moment of She's going like, to meditate. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Fabulous. Um, so you feel, Tutsuru, just real quickly, you feel just this calming wave of water sense, like, pouring over you and cal calming you down. And then we're good. And then uh, we man the main sails and, and bob the poop deck and all the other nautical terms that we definitely know and are really good at researching. And then, uh, yeah, I think our boat, like the gear, like the oars start to, to paddle themselves and they head us off to, we, we essentially uh, are attempting to never, never land this and just knock our ship into the sky. That's right. Go ahead and make for me a ship captaining check, which I believe is whoever the captain of the ship is. This is an intelligence check. Okay. With all of us, like, helping, do we, get like, assist her in uh, some way? I would say that the first mate can make a charisma persuasion check. Uh, yeah. Raise me, right? Cruise morale. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Tutoru? Yes. You said that you, like can cast like holy spells like I do, right? Ooh, Lydia, rocking that charisma check. Yeah, 23, baby. Yeah. Oh, perfect, so yes, you are gonna get to, you're gonna get a, the, the DC will be much lower. Uh, oh. uh, emerging unscathed. Oh yes, actually, I think I can help you a little bit before you go on your journey. And um, I'm gonna boop and uh, uh, may, may Sasa guide you. Thank you. And give you guidance. Nice. So that's a D4, right? Cool. Yes. Yep. Um, cool. Let's do this. And as I boop, a little leaf pops out from my finger press. <laughs> okay. Um, so unfortunately, that's only a seven with everything that got put together because I roll a five plus my one intelligence modifier plus a one on the D4. So I also oh, gave, I did I did give you advantage. Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay, cool. Yep, no worries. Excellent. Let's see. Uh, as that everyone is together. Come on, on advantage. Save us. Yeah. Well, 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 second dice was a four. So oh. um, thanks for the... Uh... Hey guys, you're excited. Remember when we had you're a just nervous. You're remember super excited. Play, remember when we had a living party and we were all alive? The good news <laughs> is you are able to sail the ship. <laughs> and good. Finally. The edge, yeah. It does, in fact, stay level with sea level as the sea drops away. Oh no. You. As you look, you can see the rest of the Temple at World's Edge Island. It sort of fades into darkness down towards the underworld. Your ship does, in fact, make it into Nyx. But I'm going to choose where it pops up. Okay. Um... Make a, I guess, like a navigation check. This would be survival to see if you can recognize where you are when you pop out into the land of Nyx. That's a uh, 14. 14, okay. I mean, you've sailed a lot in your time. Yeah. You are well able to identify the Dakra Isles when you see them. So you are in the Southern Ocean. Okay. Dakra. Dakra. So I'm going to then Dacra. pull out my map that shows me <laughs> the Dakra Isles, and then I'm going to dump the starfish on them, because I know from the other map that there were two... There was definitely two um, um, gods that were on this... That were not on the material realm, that were down in this area of the map. Yes. So I just want to have the starfish so I can, I can, I can figure out who's there. Yep. And if, if any of them are on Nyx or if any of them are on are in the underworld. Fabulous. Um, so I've changed our group's map to the map that has your ship on it. Beautiful. I have given the ship the visibility to look around. Um, and you can move about 30 miles a day. Um, Looking at your starfish map, and again, I apologize for not having this ready for the top for this show, um, but you can look at this map and see that there are uh, gods. There are four gods 
on Nyx at this Ooh. point. Ooh. Um, the locations of which can be found at one of the northern aisles, the large central southern yeah. Ruben, let's just I'm sorry, there's a lot of lore dumping here, so let's just, like, we're already at the Dakra Isles. There was a god on the Dakra yes. Isles. So is that god on Nyx? Uh... So there were two in the Docker Isles. One of them is on Nyx. Okay, yes. which one is that one? And we're going to sail to that one. You don't know which one it is. Okay, I thought, I thought the starfish were going to tell us. The starfish no, can tell you that there is a god, we just but don't not know which who. god it is. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, we sailed off the edge of the world. We're in <laughs> Nyx. We're not as close to Lightning Boy as we thought we were, but there is someone chilling down here. So, do you want to sail there and see what's up, or do you still want to go see our friend in the north? Uh, I mean, I'm down to just take the crapshoot, right? <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. We have, we have to see them all again eventually anyway, right? So, you might as well just go for it. Yeah, we might as well, like, make use of our time where we're at and maximize it. So, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. they have a warm welcome for us. Let's yeah, go for it. Let's find out who it is. Up. Yeah. All right. Uh, the location on the map that you see is about... Uh, two days sail away so you can uh, get there relatively quickly. Um, Roll a d20 for me to see if you run into anything in your sailing on this first day. 18. 18? I believe that that is safe. So you have smooth sailing on your first day. Uh, and then yeah, at the end of the first day, just real quickly, I, I'm sorry to interrupt the story for this, but um, when we had Thassa on this ship yesterday, she asked me about my son. Um, so at the end of the first day, once we are um, like in a safe spot, um, I am going to take just a real quick moment to cast Sending, which is only a 25 word conversation, so it's not going to be like a super big thing. But uh, I'm just going to send off a, a, a sending spell to my son Odexus, who is on the physical plane. And uh, I'm just going to be like, hey, Odexus, it's your mom. Uh, Thassa asked about you. So just. Making sure that you're good. How's your dad? Love you. Uh, You've got five words. Come on. Um, <laughs> oh, I talked to Thassa. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mom. Uh, things are good. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm safe. Everyone's safe. Everything okay with you? You sound stressed. That's it. And then I burn a second spell slot to go, <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, when a god says, have you talked to your son lately? It makes you a little bit stressed, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, you know what? That's understandable. I am doing well. I love you. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you soon. Cool. And then I go to bed. Aww. Great. Um, and if there's anything else you wish to do on your journey in preparation or any of that kind of stuff, you may do so. Um, so on on the like two days of their journey, Astarok will just kind of be like, "All right, let's just come clean with everything," and he'll just like spend the time telling uh, what. Ravnica is, uh, what the deal was with them being, you know, doing these crazy quests and, and being able to travel through world trees and stuff like that. And, uh, the fact that they're back in Theros and the other people. So now everyone's all caught up on that. And, and it's, a, it's a real shame that Dantalus left because he would have loved to have been able to tell this story, but apparently, you know, <laughs> wasn't worth it for him. So yeah, look. The, the kid's a chump. He, he had himself a clear epic just handed to him. Yeah. I mean, I bet your real poets would have killed people to, like, be on our boat mm -hmm. for this journey. 
But Danny's a chump. What can I say? <laughs> well, my, I my mean... family has been literally passing down the poem of Calafea for generations, and that's how awesome it is. And and now it turns out how awesome we are. That's cool. Um, but I just like I can't believe. Anyway, sorry, Tutor, you were going to say something. Well, I was going to say like maybe he had valid reasons. We don't know what 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 was going on with him, and like people make choices for their own reasons, and that's okay. Um, but I did want to say just because to make it clear, especially for people who might not know our story, that yeah, we are from Ravnica, and it is a different plane, and. Like asterox has been saying, we got these tattoos um, when we were traveling with our friends that allow us to travel between worlds. We aren't planeswalkers. We just, when we are together, we are able to, when, and we find a world tree on a plane, we can um, gather and each, like hold hands and enter the tree and come out in a different world. And hopefully if we do it right, we go to the place that we're intended to and not some random tor- terrible plane like uh, Avernus, which we did go to. Um, so, so far, I reckon pretty got this bad. Straight. Let me just see if I understand what you're telling me. You mm-hmm. are from a police that is so big that it covers the entire world, including the oceans and the land. And there are 10 like God companies that run the entire world. And everyone's like a worshiper of like the company leader. And then, and then like other people came in from other worlds to try to to fight on your world and you fled. And then you went to like a dusty underworld with like bad guys and celestials that had fallen and were fighting a war. And then you came here and apparently it wasn't good enough for you that day and you left and went back to your police world and then you were like you know what that place theros was pretty dope and so then you came back here and now you're going to help us save our world is that is that sum it all up from what that's what i piece together from yeah. what you just told me that's, cool. that's I close mean, you, you okay. missed the quick part where we got a pale guy out of a wall but <laughs> I mean, I did gloss over a little bit at one point. I am really curious about these dough circles that you talked about a lot. Like you basically <laughs> every morning described the dough circle you ate and they sounded good. I've never had one. We'll just um, have to make them for you. I'm pretty sure Asterok knows how to make them. Uh, I mean, I could try. I don't think they're going to be as good as they are when they come out of those, those little... Uh, you know, crates that that guy wheels around outside the uh, <laughs> oh yeah the, the stray in the morning. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how he does it. I think no, those things cool. are gonna have, kill me, but they're have, delicious. We have guys with crates and things outside of cool places too. Like it's like you know, we have lots of stuff. That yeah, we yeah, I can't wait to too. try them. Meanwhile, yeah. Lydia is painting a new. Uh, she is decorating since we have these two days and listening, and she is putting up a new picture of Thassa. Um, and, and it's it's uh, just just Thassa. It, it, it reminds you if you've ever seen um, a van and how you put the artwork on the van. <laughs> so it's a van portrait of Thassa, uh, not to be too gross, but maybe it's, it's a little enhanced. Um, and then um, and then the photo is of Lydia clutching onto one of Thassa's legs and looking up at her. Yes. Wait, like, no. Almost like the, the like the classic Star Wars poster. Exactly. With the, like, I love yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And she has her like, trident. Conan. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that our boat is a kick-ass van now. <laughs> Beautiful. Fident. Yes, thank you. I love it. Uh, well, airbrush actually. painting is uh, spectacular. As you can see, the sky is different here. It is dark in the middle of the day, but somehow light in the middle of the night, and it's beautiful. And the the waves and the sky meld together um, beautifully, and it's it's just a really really lovely uh, lovely experience. You know what they say: light sky at night, sailors delight. Boom. They say that. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll another yeah, d20 for me, totally as exciting. you have another day of sailing ahead of you. That's a four. That's, a, that's, not, that's not as good of a roll as the last roll was. Last roll was a good roll. I should have guided you again. Yeah, that would have been a, maybe a five. <laughs> Based on my previous guidance. <laughs> Are you getting enough sleep at night? 
Um, are, you, are you too I did, excited? I, I literally didn't sleep the night before. Like, remember, we got mm. we got transported yeah. there, and we also fought pirates and witches. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess I'm a witch. Um, As you but, like, sail, bad witches. Oh, sorry. No, go for it. No. As you sail today. You are sailing towards your destination, and you come across a uh, thick fog ahead of you. Um, it looks like with, with your as a captain, you could spend a day to sail around it, or you could attempt to sail through. Uh, instead, I'm going to use a natural ability that I have for the Triton uh, to cast a gust of wind to try to blow the fog away from my ship. Okay, gust of wind, the cantrip. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, first level spell, I believe. Okay. Um, you know, it's a second level spell. This is so. Of... I have I have the power of control air and water as a second level evocation. Okay. Um, this is a, like a huge fog bank, many times larger than your ship. Okay. So you would, how, how would you use the, the abilities in order to move Well, through? it says, um, I can concentrate for up to a minute and it says that a strong line of, a line of strong winds, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide blasts for me in the direction I choose for the spell's duration. So I think I would stand on the front of the ship and I would like, I kind of like call down, like almost like, I would almost pose like 10 commandments style with my staff in the air in my magical necklace held up. And I would like pray to Thassa and I would basically be asking her for safe passage through this fog. And so I would just keep it blowing as long as possible to try to like clear a passageway for us through it. Okay. Make an arcana check for me. Okay. To see if the power of the magic is able to cut through this huge fog. Would it be arcana or religion? Because my magic is is divine based. Mm, I'll let you do either. That's fine. Only the magic I... itself right. is is divine based, but the fog it's a bit magic. It's a dirty twenty. Okay. You are able to cut a swath like a machete through some vines directly through uh, in a 60 foot line in front of the ship. And as you do, you see that there are shapes in the fog that are sort of darting, uh, trying to remain hidden. At I'm least four. Weapons ready. Oh. Okay. So you're still going to go through? Yeah. All righty. Uh, make perception checks for me as you go through the fog. There is low visibility here. It is quite dark in the middle of the day, but also the fog is tricks. 16 for me. 15 for me. Uh... 22. Nice. When I'm nervous, I'm extra perceptive because I don't want to look in the water. So I'm just looking above it. I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, Astaroth, you're more focused on keeping your dough circles in your stomach. Um, the <laughs> three of you are able to make out shapes sort of bounding in the waves and moving in and out, not nefariously per se, but perhaps a little uh, aggressively as they see something new. Uh, Tuturu, you're able to count six humanoid shapes in the water. In the water, okay. Uh, looks like we have six, hopefully, friends here with us. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. In case they're not, I just pull my uh, ax out and kind of wait. Yeah, I have my staff ready, and I say, yeah, there's a chance that this is going to be fighting, but since we are entering the realm of a god, and we're in the god's world, we may want to make sure we're not about to, like, murder his own emissaries. Like, he might not, it might, it might be a good idea to, like, 
to err on the side of caution, but like also be ready to mess some stuff up if we have to. Is there anything that is custom here when you're going to meet a god? Like I know Thassa came and met us. But, like, if you went to meet Thassa, like, would you need to do anything to, like, present yourself? Um, I mean, I would probably, like, like do what I did when she showed up and, like, kneel and, like, hold up my, my necklace in reverence to her. And I would probably pray to her and tell her how cool she is and, like, thank her for the gifts that she's given me. And, okay. Um, those kinds of things. Um, but that's pro about what I would do. What if yeah. it was a different god that wasn't your god? I mean, the pro yeah, there's probably stuff. I don't necessarily know as much. I don't worship other gods, so I don't, like, know the best ways to appease them. And also, I don't know which god it is that we're going to... I know that it's not... I we, we kind of have a pretty good idea that it's not the Lord of Wind. But otherwise, I don't know um, who, who it would be. So uh, well, we, yeah. when we get there, we'll do something that they seem to like, right? Yeah. Like once I know which god it is, I can probably like finagle it because I am like an emissary of a god. But uh, until then, <laughs> well, right. well, it's probably not Erebos because he's almost definitely in the realm of the dead. So that's probably chill. Um, I'm going to guess it's not Clothis because she tends to hang out down there too. Like she has like a pretty long standing security gig down there. Um, and like Perforos tends to hang out on his mountain with, with like forging stuff. Like you would love him by the way, my, my, my friend, you would like him a lot. Um, Cause like he makes hammers and stuff. Um, and then, cool. yeah. So yeah, I mean, this could be Thassa. I don't know. So, because we haven't like actually gotten her to agree to this mission yet, and like we are on the ocean, so and it could be Krufix because we're like out near the horizon. Mm. So there's a lot of choices here. As you're having this conversation, you can hear scrabbling on the edge edges of your ship as it clawed hands are making their way up the side. Yeah, maybe we should uh, deal with this. Yeah, let's see what's up. Uh, Ruben, just so you know, uh, I did roll for the two days that we've been, that we've rested. Uh, I rolled for my Staff of Lightning Bolts, and it's a 1d6 recharge every day. I rolled two sixes, so that should Fabulous. be Fabulous. Yeah. Scrabbling up the side of the ship, you see a half dozen nyx born looking things that have one large central eye, and they have alien lizard-like appendages and they climb aboard the ship and they move in a strange animalistic way and one walks up and you know strange and alien way says you who who you i am and I, I was I, imagining I, the chocolate drink and i was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like it this is a word from our sponsor would you like a you <laughs> What if this was like yeah, the, the, the toast moment and like? <laughs> we are not sponsored by them, by the way. Oh my god! Sponsor us, Yuhu. Um, I feel like I'm, it's like when you're in Cracker Barrel and there's the old knee high ads that are up on the wall. Um, I'm gonna say, are they speaking in common to us? Common. Okay. Mm. Uh, hail and well met. I I am Captain Sophia of the Moray. This is my crew. We we come in peace. Uh, we are on a mission of peace to speak with the gods themselves. I'm Astaroth. Uh, hi, I'm Lydia. Nice to meet you. I'm Tuturu. Tuturu. <laughs> Made of flesh. Why here? Uh, so Ow. we're on a mission. We were sent to go talk to the gods. And so we're just trying to do that. Hmm. What's your name? Fish. Name. We have no names. We are of Krufix. So we are Krufix. Well, hello, Krufix. Um, we actually met a fellow. What was what was the name of your friend who knew Krufix, Tutsuru? Uh, Kaidel. Kaidel. Hmm. Mm. Sent. By the Watcher, you were. Mm -hmm. Make a persuasion check. 
uh, as since Tutsuru has now connected with this guy, Sophia is going to like kind of like slowly back away and let Tutsuru have center stage. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I'm. I you said a persuasion. Yes. <laughs> uh, that is a fourteen. Nice. Ooh. Hmm. Unconvinced. Perhaps a toast first. <laughs> As one of the other ones walks forward and says, with wherewithal, says, for planner travelers visiting Ravnica for the first time, it is recommended to try some fresh dough circles, popular <laughs> with the Boros Legion, great with coffee, many flavors available. Search out a local street vendor. Thank you, with wherewithal. Here's to that. Cheers. That actually sounds like this guy Jake. We know that Lydia and I get food from all the time. He's a really good cook. <laughs> oh Jake yeah. Is so cool. Does Jake have like a lot of cheeses? <laughs> yes. Prove. Prove you are not liars. Sent for nefarious reasons. Okay, I can create a zone of truth. And I cannot lie in a zone of truth. Neither can you, though. Is that okay? This is acceptable. All right. And I'll spread out my hands. And as I do, a uh, beautiful, uh, like, elemental green wind will follow it. And then as I raise them and throw them down, the wind will fall to the ground and, like, little leaves will flutter up that yeah. looked like they were laying there. And then a zone will spread out. Um, and you are casting it on, it's a 15 foot diameter, I think. I believe so. Uh, and I believe there's a save associated. Uh, yeah, let me check. Unless I'll choose, I'll yeah. choose to fail it. Yeah, you can choose to fail. Yeah, okay. it's a charisma save. Um, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to try to see if they see that you are earnest. They do. So they will also choose to fail and step into the zone. And the other five sort of animalistically gather and are eyeing you ominously. Move. All right. I am Tuturu, and I am from, well, Ravnica, but I'm here on Theros now. And I am here with my friends, and we sailed here to the edge of the world. And let me tell you, sailing is really scary. I am terrified of it, but I've actually gotten over that fear, and it's been really great. And I'm actually secretly proud of myself because I didn't think I could do it, but I have, and it's just been so great to overcome this fear. I'm sorry, I will focus. Um, and we are here to because we spoke to Kaidel and Kaidel said that we need to speak to all the gods to save the world. This is truth. I mm -hmm. like it. I want more. Make a insight check against mine my deception. Sorry, no, you make a deception check, I make an insight check. Deception check, okay. Like I'm trying to deceive you? So this is an ability that this creature has called oh. weird insight. Oh, okay. Hmm. I get to seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so your deception against my wisdom insight, if I win, I magically learn one fact or secret about the target. <laughs> Uh, if you're immune to being charmed, oh. I do not uh, get this. Are you immune to being charmed? I have, I don't know if I'm immune, but I do have resistances to it. Okay, I'll let you reroll. Let me see. The number you're looking for is 16 is what yeah. I want. All right, let me reroll then. Deception. I got an 18. Mm. 19. Hmm. To read. Walls are up, but you speak truth and much many words. So are you Kaidel? Or so are you Krufix? We are Krufix, but we are not 
Crufix. We can take you to Crufix. And they will amble back and over the edge of the ship. Darn, is hoping to ask him more questions. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, the, is the Zona's truth still up? Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go, yeah, I was really worried he was gonna ask me stuff because like I I don't really do that very often. Like I was like worried he would make me say something like I thought Lydia's drawings were really uncomfortable until that said they were okay. And she'll take <laughs> it down. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> I just that yeah. could be a conversation later, boss. I, I'm I'm so sorry. I I, I I I didn't even mean to say it, and I opened my mouth and like was like trying, and it just happened. Um, I'm but it's cool. I'm so sorry. They're actually great. Uh, Thassa loves them, so I was wrong. I was wrong, and I'm so sorry. You know I can't stay mad at you. Come on, oh, man. thank you. <laughs> the Nixborn Nothics, uh, sort of amble up on top of the ocean uh, here in Nyx, and you can follow them as your ship sails behind them through the fog. Uh, it takes the better part of a couple of hours uh, to reach your journey. Your Thank you for the raid, level one geek. Hey, welcome. Hey. Ooh, hello, friends. And you are uh, able to um, reach the other side of this fog bank, and when you do, you find a massive island um, that goes as far as you can see in either direction. And in the middle of it, there is what appears to just be a field at sea level, entirely flat, with waving grain, or what looks like grain, it's tough to tell. There are Alsaids and naiads and all sorts of nymphs that traverse over the distance as far as you can see. There are huge beasts made of star stuff that are tromping over the domain as well. And your ship, you can follow as the Nothics walk from the ocean onto the field as if nothing has changed. And your ship too can sail onto the island and through the field. Cool. This, this is, is the awesome. coolest thing we've ever done. <laughs> it's like being on land, but like not lame. It's so oh, cool. Okay. It's yeah. So... Um, a little while later, you are you see in the distance, there's essentially a hill. And on top of the hill, there is what looks like a um, an orrery, a mechanical planetary system of orbs spinning around it. Is it Vidalcan? <laughs> At this distance, you can't or, tell. Or is it, what's that new one from? Chromatic? Yeah. All right, sorry, sorry, <laughs> <It's> magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. magic. Magic, magic. It looks like there are spheres orbiting a large central sphere. Um, and there are many colors and many different um, uh, sites that you can see, but also as orbs go behind the central sphere, other orbs, different sizes, different materials, different shapes, as if they are changing based on who is looking at them from where, are appearing. And Whoa. the Nothics go, the temple mystery waits for you. All right. All right. Well, I think we're where we're supposed to be. Shall we uh, get off of this boat onto the land we seem to be sailing on? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go to that temple, I think, right? Let's go. Hey, out of character real quick, I've caught myself using ableist terms twice on the stream tonight, so I'm going to apologize to any any viewers that that might have upset, and I apologize. So I just want to, like, say I'm sorry, and I'm going to try to be better with my thing moving forward. I apologize. So I'm, I am I caught myself doing it. I, I kind of slipped into character and, like, tossed it out casually, and I'm not normally a big fan of doing that, so I just want to acknowledge that and move on. Sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you're able to tie off the boat to the ground. Um, doesn't look like it's going to float away. The ship is stable, and you're able to walk up 
the uh, the Temple of Mystery steps. No one is stopping you. There are many beings of great differing types, huge chimeras with heads of storks or goats or lions fly off in the distance. Um, you can see herds of what might be some kind of cattle uh, in the near in the near distance as well. But you can climb the stairs and no one is stopping you as the doors are open and you walk inside and seated maybe or perhaps just looming um, is not a person, but instead a almost two dimensional shape of a cutout of stars as if a painting was wearing a hood and it says, welcome heroes. Uh... Uh, Lydia just goes up, hi, my name's Lydia, and puts her hand out. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, the two-dimensional shape um, reaches out towards your hand. Hi, nice to meet you. Very enthusiastic handshaking. Um, <laughs> and when you, when you touch it, it feels like your hand's asleep. Oh. Um, it doesn't even feel like, it's not physical. It's like uh, like your hand is is zapped with plasma. Wow! Wow! It is nice to meet you. Why are you here? Well, uh, we're here because we are uh, heroes, like you said. Look at us, big heroes, and we're doing things that heroes do, like talk to gods. Astarok does some some poses in the background, looking muscular. <laughs> Talk to gods about what? Um, you know, just like god stuff. You know, just like what's it like to be a god? Lydia doesn't know if she should be divulging their <laughs> true mission yet. Um and she's not the brightest. So, you know, just like god stuff, just like, hey, like what's it like being a god? It sounds like super chill. You know, because uh, that's what heroes do. We talk to gods. It is. That's what heroes do. Super <laughs> chill. Hero stuff. Yeah. Um, wait, so wait. we met a friend of yours. The the witness was that what her name was? The watcher. The, ah, the watcher. Kaidel. Yes, she has sent you to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Not to you specifically. Time, but... Yeah. That was Starfish. And we just picked the closest, you know? Go on. Uh, so, uh, what? Uh, let's go. So, uh, we were told that there are a bunch of, like, bad things. Uh, there's, like, four bad things. And uh, you guys... Uh, got rid of them, but there's five bad things. What were they called? The Titans. Yes, the Titans. That's right. There were five Titans, but the fifth one uh, is, you guys don't mention it for some reason, but it's gonna break everything. And you are here to ask who the fifth Titan is. Um, no. Um, we're here to ask you to be chill about opening up Theros to other planes again, because otherwise Theros will die. That was it. You yeah. see well, we also the shade get larger and the room get a little bit darker and Krufix booms and says, you wish to open the world up to the terror of the fifth titan? Yeah, I mean, oh. not specifically to the terror of the fifth titan. Just the terror of the multiverse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you might want to touch base with your watcher because she told it way better than we could, but also, like, it was a lot of words. So, um, 
but like that was kind of the crux was fifth titan don't know who he is doesn't live on theros but theros is choked off because of other worlds not being able to travel with their energies and starfish a lot of starfish starfish yeah starfish hmm kaideli sent you because she is wise. And you came to me first because of an accident. Are there accidents, though? Like, yeah, you know, maybe good. maybe we were destined to come to you first. Maybe, maybe Clothis thought, like, they really should go talk to Krufix first. So I'm going to like rearrange some stuff to like, she was like, I'm going to, she was like, she was like, I'm going to send them to cloak to Kruf. Maybe she did that. Yeah. Like, like could we have gone anywhere else first when you like think about it? But we're here. Yeah. It's big destiny. Here. Standing remember? in front of you. Mm -hmm. I agree. Asking you to help us. There are no accidents. <laughs> There is only destiny. You believe it is the destiny of the plane to be reopened. I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's the only way that we're going to save Theros, which I am like really big on. I'm really big on saving the only place I've ever been to or known. As far as I can tell, you got two choices. Either you reopen the place or, you know, you're like, Pack your stuff and find somewhere else. And, yeah. It's hard to move a boat to another world, I think. I mean, we guess we did it today, but it's still kind of the same world, so. Yeah. Mm. Perhaps it is worth considering. However, in order for any hero to consider their ordeal complete, they must pass a test. What okay. test should I give you? Whatever uh, you could, You could test us to see how well we get along with crabs. I, I, do, a, I, do, I could do a lot of push-ups. I draw Never. real good. Yeah. Really good. And they're not at all, uh, never mind. Hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you some free ones and Astarok does a couple push up here. I accept all you first and points at Lydia. Oh, okay. Um, and let's says, do it. Paint. Okay. Um, I uh, have some supplies on me. Uh, we can get going. And so then Lydia starts painting. Um, uh, Tutri is going to tap her on the back and go, you got this, and <laughs> guidance her. <laughs> uh, she's going to paint just the coolest. If you've ever, if you go back to the 90s, if you remember who Rob Leefield is and the way that he just <laughs> and made all of his characters awesome. So first she starts with Astarok, uh, giving him an open shirt and about 10 abs. Just abs on abs on abs. Um, next uh, is Tuturu, uh, who she draws. Uh, having taken the note that uh, Safia has given her several times during this, she draws very appropriately um, <laughs> along with Safia. And then she gets to herself, um, which she draws in such a way that her waist and her back, you can see her butt and her chest at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Make a performance check for me. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> With guidance. With guidance, okay. Oh geez. Oh geez. 18. Perfect. Oh wait, with hold on. No, I lied. Modifier. It's 20, yeah. yeah, it's 27. <laughs> Ooh, 27. I'm sorry. And with more pouches. That just means more pouches on everyone. You're not even <laughs> playing a bard this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the two-dimensional form of crucifix which previously had just been very stoic, you can actively see the planner being shifts and pays closer attention to this beautiful piece of pop art that has just been placed uh, in his temple. You like? 
I like. You with the ten pack. <laughs> yep. Master Huck. Do your push ups. All right, let's do this. <laughs> and Master uh, Huck uh, gets down and and gets into a push-up position and starts like singing some Boros training songs he's doing. He's like, we're the Boros, we're okay. We put criminals away. Boros, Boros, Legion. <laughs> Just like. Uh, so yeah, roll, roll an athletics check for me. Yes, I do have to also do that. Come on, that's Athletics. Oh, I rolled an 18. That's a 26. Oof. Doing pretty good so far, I would say. He just, yeah, he just keeps doing push-ups. And eventually you guys are like, man, this is a really long test. And he's like run out of verses in the songs. Oh. He goes, uh, I, I can't sing my next verse. Like, it it kind of starts, like after a while, we stop talking about how great the Boros are. And we kind of just start like riffing on all the other guilds. And, uh, <laughs> It gets pretty raunchy, so <laughs> one, you guys aren't gonna get it. Two, Tutu's gonna get it, and she won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Crufix uh... applauds calmly. Well done. <clears throat> yep, yeah, that's Boros Legion. <laughs> Who would like to go next? I guess I guess I'll go next. Um, what can I what can I do for you, Great Crufix? I request what you would like to show to show me that you and this or and and this mission are worth my blessing. Hey, and and I, I like. I like go, hey, Odie, Odie. And Odie climbs up onto my shoulder and I go, tell the nice man how much fun we have on the boat together. <laughs> hey, um, we have a great time. I mean, Sophia is just the best. And I have spent all of my many years on the moray and you know i just love it and you know even if she wasn't on this mission she would be a hero to me oh thank you buddy make a persuasion check at advantage okay. because Odie is helping you okay not my strong suit with this character she is not velma sweet Um, okay, my better of those two is a 14. Okay. Make a befriend crab check. <laughs> He's always my friend. We're best friends. I'm his and mother. Crufix extends a starry finger and looks at you and says, may I? Okay. And gives little scritches. Oh. Scritches, scritches. Little scritches to Odie. Um, and then I think to like to like drive it home. I think that I I, I think I'm already showing more Nyx born tendencies than I ever have because I'm already on Nyx. But I think that I will burn my once a day usage of my Nyx born cloak, and like I will actually like wrap myself in a cloak of stars, and that's kind of like my way of being like I was born for this. Like this is my destiny. Like I'm I I was this is why I live. So. Um, yeah, and I think that's like, and I, I think that when that happens, you hear the like melody of the sea sort of like cascade across me as the like cloak wraps around me. And everyone sees that like now, like I have this full on cloak of stars that just kind of like wraps around me and envelops me and almost looks like the, like if you, instead of seeing my physical form, it's like almost like there's like a hole in, in, in the world and it's like night sky through me. Um, and like a cloak over my head 
and yeah, you hear like the crashing of waves and you realize that every night while you were sleeping on my boat, you dreamt of the sea because you were Aww. near me while you were sleeping. And uh, yeah, and that's that's what she does. And then she kind of like kneels in reverence to the god and then kind of like steps away um, to say like, I don't know what else to show you at this point. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And last, but not least. <clears throat> As Sophia walks by Tuturu, she puts her hand on her, and I give you guidance. So you suddenly feel like this warmth, this like, this like bit of, similar to the, when the wave crashed over you, giving you calmness, but it's almost like an energetic thing. It's like, it's like when the, you know, like when waves have that force that hits you and it kind of has that really exciting mm -hmm. feeling, you kind of mm -hmm. feel that happen a little bit. And then I like continue my bowing and walk away. <laughs> All right, Tutu is gonna step forward and uh, look at Kaidel. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying Kaidel now. Look at uh, Krufus <laughs> and uh, say, um, I don't really have a special thing I can do or anything, but I feel like this is my destiny to be here. Um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm Tuturu and I, well, how do I put this? I think, I think I'll, I'll show. Showing is better than talking, right? And she'll take it, kind of stop here and um, she'll close her eyes and just take a deep breath. And as she does that, she'll like, kind of settle a little bit more than she has been the entire time she's been here. She's kind of been a little like, not uptight, but just kind of like uncomfortable a little. Um, kind of like she doesn't feel like she's totally belonged yet. And she'll kind of just settle into place. And as she does that, she'll let her ears fall and they'll actually fall into their full capacity, um, which means she splays them out into full manta ray size ears, um, which are huge. Um, and she'll kind of let them spread. And then she'll look up and she'll say, I am different than when I was. I'm different. I was always different from when I've been at home. And I, I have, we have, and I'll look back at the group. We have this connection, this power, and I'll show my tat, the tattoo. This power that is with us and they have it sometimes, and I'm sure they're going to get it eventually. I've all got the it time. all the time. I hold yeah. my arm up, and it says, thank you for the raid, Fable 42. <laughs> thank you for the raid. Um, and I, I don't think it's by accident that we're here, because every time we've used any sort of guiding power, we've ended up places that are in need of us. And that happened when we went to Avernus. That happened the first time we came here and met with Kaidel. And I always felt like when I went back to my home that something wasn't right and so that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And that's why I'm here now. That's why I came here with Astarok. And for once, I feel like I am where I'm supposed to be. And I feel like that's here. And for this to be what's happening right now, for Theros to be in grave danger and for the keepers to not see that and for us to be here to say, hey, you need to look at what's happening to your world. I feel like that has to be the reason, right? So if anything, I just need you to kind of open your eyes and I need you to open your heart and feel what's happening around you to Theros. And that's, that's all I gotta say. Roll a religion check at advantage with guidance. Nice. Okay. Yeah, but how many push-ups could you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but he knows a few lewd poems, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the Adventure Archive, right? thanks for the raid. Hey, thank you. Okay. Welcome, okay. everybody. Religion, where are you on my sheet? Oh, you're at the bottom, plus zero. Okay, so the first one is a B for a natural 20! What? <laughs> ah! Um, ah! With, with guidance. Nailed it. Uh, oh, guidance is not a D8. I rolled an eight on that though, so I don't know what is with these dice tonight. They've been guided. 
<laughs> they knew that the speech was good. That's a four. So max <laughs> dice. Nice. You just max dice three in a row. That's incredible. <laughs> what is yeah. happening? <laughs> um, tight. Twenty is interesting. <laughs> Big ears and a tattoo. <laughs> I told Crew you she belonged in the open. Look at those manta rays. It <laughs> looks at you and leans in. And as they lean in, you see that the flat surface of Crufix is not a cutout, but in fact, a door into more stars beyond. And those stars beyond have shapes and colors. There are galaxies. There are individual spots of light. Some of them make shapes like clouds in the sky. Some of them look like birds or look like shields. And one of them looks like someone you recognize and says, and Crufix says, I recognize that symbol. I haven't seen it in a long time. And you recognize the voice of Mookie Mm -hmm. through Crufix. You are blessed by the morrow. Interesting. And it pulls back. And Crufix says, it does appear as if this is destiny. And as the god born from when mortals imagined new possibilities, who am I to stand in the way? And Prufix will wave their hand, and there is a stone about four inches in diameter. It has the eight-pointed star of Crufix upon it. And he says, your ordeal is complete. Good luck on the rest of your journey. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. You can keep that drawing, by the way. I don't need it back. I quite enjoy it. And as we pull away from that scene, I'm going to give you a quick stinger. As Dantilus walks into a amphitheater somewhere on the mainland. It's dusk on the material plane. And he says... Um, I'm back. Uh, they've started. And from the shadows, the gold mask of Phoenix emerges and says, good job. You'll be needed again. And I think that's where we'll call the episode. Callie does not right. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny boy. Danny. 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 <laughs> we did it, though. Uh, we got wood. Whoa. We did it. Yeah, we got to go. <laughs> and, and we've got to find time to shake Danny next time we see him, because I think he deserves a good shake. Yeah. yeah. Danny is yep. the Benny of this realm. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun, y'all. I'm, I'm glad that we got through that. I know it got in the weeds a little bit there, but uh, I, I hope you all had fun. And hey. now we're on a now we're on a quest. One down, fourteen to go. Easy, right. easy peasy. Oh, <laughs> come out! Yeah. Got some pushovers. Boom, boom, boom. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, we are the Broken Pact, and we are going to be back uh, next week. And uh, I want to let my cast reintroduce themselves and tell the folks at home where to find you. Starting with Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and if you want to find me, go to Twitter at Jordan Pigeon, like the bird, and my first name. Um, and that's that's mostly it right now. Uh, you can go. I, I'm on some other shows that have uh, ended here on Saving Throw, so, you know, go back through our catalog and watch some of those. Wildcards is quite fun. 
Hey everybody, I'm Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman. And I have two big things this week that I'm very excited about. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm gonna be on our friend's channel, Life Action Roleplay. I'm doing, I'm playing an angel in a cool little Heaven's Boardroom style mm -hmm. game that our friend Ryan Omega, who's been on this show in the past, has, is running and I'm really excited about nice. that. And then this Friday, I'm doing my first official show as a member of Ripley Improv. Uh, we're doing our hospital drama, improv our improvised hospital drama, Heartbeats. Uh, which actually also co-stars Terry Gamble from this channel. Uh, hmm. and she will be there on Friday as well. So check that out. Uh, I am playing a character that I'm very excited about, but we're keeping it a little bit on the uh, secretive right now. It's a little, little bit of intrigue with it. Uh, but I'm very excited about it because I am playing a doctor and I'm really excited to be playing a trans woman who is a doctor, which is like that is a thing that I'm doing. I, I like that bit of representation that we don't often get for uh, people of my persuasion. So uh, it, is, it is a really exciting thing to do. So that's going to be this Friday on twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv. So check that out. It's 6, 6 p.m. Pacific. So a little bit earlier for you uh, East Coast uh, folks as well. Uh, but check that out. And thank you very much. And happily International Women's Day for those of you who are still yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. You can find me at Danielle Radford on Twitter, Danielle underscore Radford on Insta. Um, I'm one of the writers of the Honest Trailers. New ones come out every Tuesday. So uh, go watch the thing I wrote some jokes for. And I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And you can check out my voiceover demos at ashlynrose.com if you want to. And that's it for me. Excellent. I am Ruben Bressler, your dungeon master. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Um, please stick around as we are going to be raiding the Scabby Rooster channel after this. Uh, and also join us, please, this coming Wednesday with an all-new All Games No Masters episode uh, where the gang's going to be finishing up their run of the indie RPG dialect. Uh, the stream is going to start at 7 p.m. Pacific right here on Saving Throw, as well as over on the Fantasy Network. So please do join us then. Thank you all so much for joining us, uh, and we'll see you here next week on The Broken Pack. Good night, everybody. Thank you.